everyone, this is Don Coffeen. My wife, myself, and my three children have been coming here to the Wayworld Outreach for several years and have been so blessed sitting under the teaching of Pastor Marco. One of the subjects we'll be talking about today in our devotional is that of giving. There is an unsung hero sitting patiently and quietly inside of the heart of a man or a woman of God. This unsung hero, it has the ability to change the hearts of men, help heal marriages, help bring men out of darkness into the light. It has strengthened people in the areas that they never thought possible. That special unsung hero I'm talking about is that of giving. There are scriptures in both the Old Testament and New Testament that paint a beautiful picture of giving. From Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, it says this, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer, and one withholds, and for him he is found in want. For those who sow blessings, they will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. Another scripture from Proverbs, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord. That's a great, great verse for those who really want to know what giving provides the one who gives. And that's an amazing aspect of our God. There's a teaching in the New Testament, in the first book of the New Testament called Matthew. It's Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And it is the Beatitudes. This is where Christ took his followers and began to teach them what it's going to be like when he's not around after his death. What it's going to be like to live a life that honors and pleases God. He essentially gave us our marching orders so we'd know what to do and how to honor God with our lives. One of the teachings he taught us was in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. And it says this, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. So what are all these things? These things like peace, joy, provision, purpose, excitement for living, and a heart that wants to honor God. Those are the things that are promised in that verse. And that particular verse is our verse for the day, Matthew 6, 33. And for me, it never became more real than in October 2013. That verse hit me like a freight train going right through my heart and soul. I'd been working a job of my dreams. I was an executive pastor and an executive director for a missions organization. My job, set up orphanages around the world and work with refugee camps and educators, teaching, um, showing men how to be great men of God. All these things were just a dream job for me. And I was let go. I came in on October 22nd, 2013, and I was told that I was no longer needed. They actually, they couldn't pay my salary anymore. They were scaling things down and I had to go. And I thought about that when I was driving home. Number one, I got to tell my wife when I get home. And number two, this must be God. Because everything that I was doing, I knew was right in the eyes of God. So when I got back, I told my wife, okay, we're going to roll up our sleeves and go find a job. And I'm going to do what's needed to make this right. We're going to find out where God wants us. So one month went by, two months, three months. As a pastor, I applied at every church I can think of even across the United States. And I always got way up on the list, but I never made the call. I never got them to call me and say, you're the guy. So after a year and a half, my wife and I had even gone to a foster agency to be foster parents. We could use the money because we were out and we could also help kids. So we went to the foster agency, did all the paperwork and we waited. The call never came. We never got offered any kids. And it was truly, truly amazing that I found myself, having been a Christian man for a long time, not really understanding what it meant to be walking side by side with God. It's as if everything had left me. And I got up one night at about three in the morning, and I threw my hands up and said, God, I don't get it. I'm doing everything you told me to do, and nothing's working. Our credit cards are maxed out. We're behind in all our bills. I feel the strain on my marriage. I feel the strain on my walk. This is difficult. And I remember looking from my office out into the dark living room, and I felt that verse hit me like never before. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. 
And as I thought about that and meditated on that scripture, it finally hit me. That unsung hero, alive in my heart, was now activated. I knew the importance of giving more, serving more, giving more of myself. I called my wife when she got up that morning. I called her in and I said, Deborah, sweetheart, we're going to change our approach to this. Every penny we get extra, and there wasn't very many, we'd give to the church. Every bit of time we had, and it wasn't much, we gave to volunteer and to serve. We even got to the point where we were scraping change off the dresser, having garage sales, whatever it took to be the hands and the feet of Christ we needed to do. My heart was this, if I was going down, I'm going down as a giver. And that's what I put my heart toward. Well, one month went by, two months, three months, and on the fourth month, we got the call. Not the call I was expecting, but we got a call. It was from the foster agency. Don, Deborah, we have something for you. It's not fostering children. We need to come in and talk to you in person. I said, okay, sure, I'm open. They came to the house and they stood across from us and they said, Don, Deborah, we have three babies. They've been abused horribly. They've had their bones broken and tortured. It's a mess. They've been neglected and their special needs. And we want you to take them into your home and to raise them and make them yours. I wasn't expecting that. My mind went, immediately went back to my daughter, Nicole. She's now 30 years old and an officer in the army and a doctor. She made it. But her first five years from the day she was born, her first five years, she could barely breathe. She had an apnea monitor, monitor an oximeter. She was not able to even keep herself alive on her own. At least three or four nights a week, I'd have to rush in there and revive her. I did that for five years. And then I realized, okay, if I take these three babies, it's going to be that times three. So I told the lady, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I can't put myself and Deborah through this again. We're not going to do it. And then the whole room went quiet. I remember it as I'm sitting here talking to you. The whole room went quiet. And I felt God's voice hit me gently, crystal clear. If you don't take these kids and raise them the way I want you to raise them, you're going to break my heart. And that really struck me. And I looked at the girl from the foster agency and I said, you know what, guys, I said no, but God just spoke to me. And I don't want to break God's heart. So I said, yes, we will take the kids. It was just before we got to see them for the first time. I was driving to church with my wife and I told her, sweetie, I've done the math. You and I aren't making it right now on our own. We can't afford three kids. We can't afford to work with special needs and all the medical things that are going to take place. We just can't do it. So we need to call the foster agency and, and apologize and give somebody else a chance to raise these kids because I don't think we can do it. And my wife looked at me and she said, okay, I'll support you. We'll call the foster agency when we get in Monday morning and we'll let them know our decision. Well, God had something different in mind. Thank goodness for that. We got to church. There was a guest speaker at the church. Now, I don't know what he spoke about, but I remember the end of the service. He says, I'm going to pray for whoever needs prayer. And when you come forward, I'm going to lay my hands on you. We're going to ask God to heal you and speak to you. So I told Deborah, let's go forward. I just tore my rotator cuff, so it was in a lot of pain, and have him pray for my shoulder. So we went forward. He put his hand on my shoulder, didn't know it was the bad one. And he said, God wants me to tell you. Now, mind you, nobody knew about what Deborah and I were planning. God wants me to tell you, get the kids, bring them into your home, and I will provide for you. And that was the most amazing thing. I looked at him. I looked at her. She was looking at me. We both looked at him. And then he began to pray for my shoulder. I don't know what he prayed for my shoulder, but I knew I heard from God crystal clear. So now as I'm sitting here, we got three of the most amazing kids in the world. Yes, they have special needs, but they've done more for us than we could ever, ever imagine. Their joy, their excitement. You know, those three children pray for me. Right now, they're five, seven, and eight, and they'll come and lay hands on me and pray for me and my wife. They have sparked something inside of me and brought that unsung hero to life. The heart of a giver, not something everybody has, but you ready for this? Did you know the heart of a giver has the ability to put a smile on God's face? And that's what God's calling for you. 
Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. The Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. God bless you.